Now today I'll be showing a number of different things you can do at home to pinpoint why the fuel pump is not working in your vehicle. Now if you're not sure if the fuel pump is turning on, this is the easiest thing to do. First remove the fuel cap and then have someone turn the ignition key and you should hear some noise for roughly two seconds. Now if the fuel pump is not turning on, the first thing to check is the relay that sends battery power to the fuel pump. Now in this vehicle, the relay lives behind this kick panel on the driver's side of the vehicle. Easiest way is just to a web search and you can dig up pretty quickly where the relay lives on your vehicle. And then I just have a trim removal set, okay? This makes the job really easy so you don't have to scratch up your fingers removing any plastic panels. And this is a really nice set that I've had for a number of years and I'll link all of the tools in the description box below. Easy enough to remove. And then this guy right here is our fuel pump relay. Oops. Okay. So here's our fuel pump relay. Really easy to check and test at home. Now if your fuel pump relay looks a little bit differently, I'll link another video I did some time ago. And you can really ultimately check any relay that has four or five posts. Now fortunately, testing a relay at home is very, very easy. This is a digital multimeter. Again, I will link all of the tools in the description box below. This is roughly $25 if you do need one. And then we need a power source. So I have a battery pack that pushes out roughly 11 volts. If you have an older cordless tool, 20 volts will work, but it may blow the relay if it's good. So if you have a 12 volt battery pack, and if you look close on the pack itself, you have a positive and a negative, okay? So very, very easy. This is essentially a switch. So when you turn on the ignition key, power is sent from the battery to the relay, and then the relay allows power now to be sent over to the fuel pump. That's all that we're checking is that the switch turns on and off. So we start by plugging in the leads that come with the multimeter. And then I have two wires with alligator clips on the ends of them. And all that we're doing is sending power from the battery pack to our relay. Now you may be thinking, how do you know which two terminals to touch? Well, process of elimination. So we're simply taking the leads directly to these two vertical posts and you should hear a clicking noise, okay? So absolutely nothing. Now, let's switch it, okay, to this side. And there we go, you hear that? That is a very, very good sign. Now just in case to show you, if we use or connect these two guys, nothing will happen. Okay, same thing vice versa. So we know that it's powering on, but now we need to verify that it's working correctly. So easy enough to do at home, let's power this on. And now on the multimeter, let's make sure these two wires do not touch, on the multimeter, you want the setting for continuity, okay? That looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. Just make sure you're on the right setting and you should hear an audible alert, okay? This is what you want to hear. So you take the two leads from the multimeter to the other two posts. Now it does not matter which one you touch and we should have continuity. And we do. So this is working 100% correctly. If I remove the power, there's no continuity, okay? That's all it takes. Really, really easy to do at home. So now we know with 100% certainty that this relay is in perfect shape. But what if it's not being powered on? What if you have a blown fuse? Now at the same location, we have not only all of these relays, but also fuses. And if you simply remove this cover, you have a listing of all of the fuses and what they are responsible for. Now you can also check underneath the hood. 
and you'll find another relay box, at least one other one. So what you want to look for is fuel pump, which is number 19 in this case. So by looking at the chart, we know that it's the middle row and one, two, three, four, the fourth one back from the right, this is the one that we need to check. Now on this Acura and many vehicles, you will find a fuse puller encased in the fuse box. So with the fuse puller, I can check this fuse. And now we can see that the fuse is perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not blown. But there's also one other thing that we need to check. Now before we move over to the fuel pump itself, the last thing is there's another relay that powers on this relay that we removed earlier. Now it sounds a little redundant, but when you turn on the ignition key, this relay sends power to the vehicle's computer, the injectors, and to this relay. So if this is no longer good, this cannot power on. Now we can check this relay by the same process that we used before, but there is a little bit easier and faster way to see if power is getting here. So once again, we're using the multimeter. You want the volts DC setting. Okay, and then I have one lead going to ground. Okay, that's any good metal point on the body. And then I have a test probe. And essentially what we're doing is turning on the ignition key. Now we want to see battery voltage on this display. So roughly 12 volts, 11 to 12 is a good reading. Again, black wires to ground, any good metal point. And then I'm just taking the red lead and inserting it into where the relay lives. So this is the relay that we tested inside the garage earlier, and there's no change. Okay, let's check the next port. And then let's check our multimeter. And we have roughly 12 volts worth of power. So that verifies that power is being sent from this relay to this relay, which then sends power to the fuel pump. Now right below this mat, there's a clip that we just need to remove. So this is where the fuel pump is located. If you don't find it in the trunk area of your vehicle, check under the rear seats. And you'll always find a cover. We just have three fasteners to remove. Now fortunately for this Acura, it is not glued on. A few months ago I did this on an Audi and you have to take a razor blade, cut away the glue, and then apply a new gasket or new glue after you're done. So this makes the job a lot easier for sure. Okay. Now to remove the harness connector, there's a tab at the nine o'clock here. Press the tab and pull up. Don't pull from the wires. A little hard one hand here. Okay, so once again, multimeter, and we're doing a continuity test. So that's when two points make a connection. We have an audible alert. So the black lead coming from the multimeter is ground. Okay, so I have a grounding strap right back here. Okay, and then the red lead from the multimeter goes to the harness connector. Now I'm looking for the ground wire. So that's the black wire right here. And if I follow that black wire, it leads to this prong at roughly 11 o'clock. So I should have continuity. The ignition key is turned off. Nothing is powered on right now. And we have continuity. So that verifies that I have no wire breaks for ground. Now, if you do not have continuity or, or you're not getting a reading here, then you have to find that wire break. The easiest way to do that is there's a tool that you can purchase. Maybe you could rent one at your parts store and it will find any electrical break in your vehicle throughout the vehicle, very easy to use. And I will link that tool in the description box below. And for this last step, the ignition key is turned on so that power is getting to this harness connector. 
So what we're looking for is battery voltage on the meter. So we know this prong up here is ground. So don't bother with that one. Let's try this guy. It doesn't hurt anything. This is four millivolts, no good. Try this guy. This is 48 millivolts. Let's try this guy. And there you go. This is our power, 11 volts. That's battery voltage. So now we know with 100% certainty, we have no wiring issues, no fuse issues, and no issues regarding the relays. Now wrapping this up, if you do need to replace the fuel pump, but maybe you're a little hesitant tackling the job, I have done two prior videos regarding replacement. One was on a Subaru and the pump was located under the rear seats, the other on the Audi behind me. Ultimately, it's pretty much the same for most vehicle in terms of you have that plate that you just saw on the Acura, harness connector, vent line, remove the pump from the uh, tank, replace it, and you're ready to rock and roll. So I hope this helps a number of you out there test everything. You, trust me, you can save a lot of money just pinpointing where the problem is. And as always, thank you for watching.